and welcome once again to the Monarchs Friday Focus. Uh, a slightly damp and a abbreviated meeting to look back on tonight, David. Um, but as always, we'll look back a 51-27. That's not a score we say every day victory uh, for the Stags Bar Monarchs. And David, difficult conditions, but to, to a man, the riders cope quite well. Yeah, it was one of these nights where uh, you really just need to try and go for it and... Uh, if you if you're rolling it to go in there, get in there and get into the dirt and try, then then it then it would work for you. And and all seven of our guys, even Connor, trying hard, is is working for us. A couple of Eastbourne guys maybe weren't quite at it, but uh, that's what happens in home matches. And thankfully, the weather that was promised at one point yep. at seven o'clock didn't arrive till about five minutes before <laughs> Canel might have fetched a tripod. Yep. Um, thanks very much to everyone for leaving the equipment on the back straight so I had to run down that storm. Um, I took a little video of just how heavy the rain was, so you'll see that in a little bit. Um, we'll look back on the meet tonight. We'll hear from Eastbourne's Jason Edwards, Monarch's number one, Sam Masters, and as always, there's a race tonight uh, this week. It was Heat 12, an interesting tussle with Nick Morris and, and Josh Pickering there. David, coming into the meeting, obviously we knew the forecast wasn't great. That can equal... You know, make track conditions equal yeah. for everyone. Eastbourne come up, Nick Morris guesting, a, a track expert here. Richard Lawson knows the best, but Alfie Botel's had good meetings. Um, Oi Kerr's had good meetings. It looks like it was going to be a tough match. Yeah, I mean, Eastbourne have had a lot of good meetings this year. They're into the, the final of the Championship Shield. Yeah. They're, a, they're a good team. They've got a lot of good riders, and obviously we're re- missing Eddie Kennett tonight, but I don't think uh, Nick Morris would have made any difference. I think he was excellent yeah. tonight. He was one of the guys that was really on it for them. As you say, a couple of guys that have had better nights as well here, but uh, but I mean, it's a, such a hard day for the track staff as well. You have to have to say that conditions were difficult early on, especially on that third bend. Uh, but to, to get our uh, thirteen yeah. good races in tonight was a was good for us. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously a huge well done, as you said, just for getting a meeting. All right, this was a, it was what four meetings, five meetings were due to go ahead in the country today. This was the only one that survived, yeah. and that's a testament to the work that goes in. Um, not just on a Friday, but you know, by the track staff to make sure that, and it's a track that it wasn't just rideable as well. Okay, there was early doors, as you mentioned, a few riders struggled, but as the meeting progressed, um, there were some racing lines came on, there were some good tussles there, and as per usual, I think in these conditions, it, the reward was there for the riders that went out and attacked it. Yeah, as I said, attacking a track, and you see, like, say, Cam and Josh and Sam, and as I say, Nick Morris as well, going for it that race went when Nick and uh, Josh was excellent and yep. the same way with Cam as well and he's right the race before it's, it's good quality high speed racing and, and these conditions and it's, it's really good to watch impressive to see and uh, say good night's meeting good three points for the Monarchs that's what matters yep that's what matters obviously we know what we need to do away from home but the, the flip side of that is we cannot afford any more home slip ups some tough meetings on the on the calendar including tonight to come so good to get the three points and, and once again led from the front by that top four you know sam um we'll hear from him a little bit annoyed to drop a point um i think he just kind of got a good start by morris and heat one james had made a good start was happy in second sam realized after a lap, lap and a half that he wasn't going to get there cameron heaps i think he, he phoned john campbell or text john campbell this morning so he wasn't 100 percent, but he'll give it a go four rides four wins 12 point maximum if that's him less than 100 percent. then what's going to be 100 i think josh and ricky or josh only dropped one point and ricky back to his best in conditions like this, you want to do it the way he did it. Hit the first bend in front every time and never really troubled, albeit the one he Josh did get past him. Yeah, I mean, that that, uh, that he, the number three and four combination is yep. what we're looking at. was going to be a powerhouse for us, get us lots of advantages. Tonight, three, five, once. Yep. Although, I mean, as you say, Josh, uh, we're thinking maybe Ricky was going a bit slow, <laughs> pushed past him and nearly disturbed him a wee bit. But uh, for all that matters, yeah, Nicky, uh, uh, Ricky, uh, nine, paid, paid nine, yep. he'll be disappointed he didn't get that fourth race. Cameron, exceptional. And a uh, good night all round. And James Sargent as well. Yep. That that crucial heat eight after Willie Lawson going out yep. and Botel was leading the first time. He made sure the second time and, and got that point. Made sure that uh, Nick Morris won two races. That was the... Only two races he's won one all night. So yeah, that's I, I was actually about to mention that there. Obviously, good backup from James. I think it was at seven points that James finished on. Um, his trademark making good starts, riding solidly. Boyle Lawson yeah. picking up at reserve. Obviously, he wins heat two. Um, he backs it up um, with you know points. In his next one, pretty unlucky in my eyes to be excluded in heat eight. Um, you know, I, it's one of those ones, isn't it? Botel, I think it was, was in front, um, but Botel ought to be going very slow to me. What's Lawson's option? Pile through him or put it on the centre green? He slowed it up, but he still nudged him going down. Fair point to Willie, though. He wasn't 
complaining too much. He had an interview with, with John and Liam afterwards, and he seemed to accept the decision. Um, but all in all, that was a, a strong performance by the Monarchs. And the, the type we'll need to see going forward with the likes of Somerset, um, I think Newcastle still to come here and stuff. Teams that are very good. Yeah, some, some good riders to come, and that's the kind of performance we'll need. Yeah, definitely. As you see, when Willie was honest enough to say he did, there was contact when he went down. I can agree with you. Motels moving a bit slow, but that's sometimes that's the, that's the way Speedway goes. Just glad to see everybody up and okay, especially yeah. young, uh, especially Kyle Newman after that cr uh, crash. Yeah. And he uh, was at twelve. Yeah. Yeah. I, I spoke to, to Will Pottinger, the uh, Eastbourne team manager, afterwards, yeah. um, and he was saying basically the front chain actually came off the sprocket. Um, so it didn't snap, it just came off the sprocket, stopped him dead, then he went. He was lomping about the pits afterwards, so they're still not sure how he's going to be for the rest of the weekend, um, but fingers crossed he's okay. And the same with Georgie Wood, obviously Georgie had to pull out after two races, um, so hopefully these guys are, are fitting around to go for it. A big weekend for Eastbourne with trips to Berwick, I guess this evening as it were, Saturday night as you're watching this, and Newcastle on Sunday. Um, we'll get some reaction from the riders now, David, I think me and you have, uh, we've given our opinion on the match. First off, we'll hear from Monarchs number one, Sam Masters. Sammy, um, conditions started tough, obviously the rain came in late, we had to call the match off, but some decent race, I think the track was there to, to be ridden if you went after it, and a good one for the Monarchs. Yeah, it was uh, impressive to actually turn up here and it not be underwater, like, I drove up from down south and it was raining the whole way, so uh, yeah, I was surprised with that, and, and it wasn't too bad really, and obviously the rain ruined it right at the end, but at least we got what we needed to out of it, and uh, yeah, happy days. And uh, obviously, home wins are a must, um, any more home points dropped and we're done. Eastbourne looked like a tasty team coming up. Obviously, Nick Morris guest and Richard Lawson does well here. A lot of guys do well. So it was good to, to put a big victory on. Yeah, everyone done well in the team. We all dug deep and it was really nice to, that we uh, had a comfortable win for once. So, uh, yeah, everyone done what they needed to do. And um, except for me, I dropped a point. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, nah, that's the way it is. And we, we won. So, I mean, that's, what, that's all we need to do. Yeah, and I guess sometimes when the conditions are like this, it's just a case, obviously, seven Monarchs coming out fit. Three points on the board. That's all you can ask for tonight. Well, that's what we—that's what it's all about, man. It's here, we're here as a team, so we, uh, we need to leave here with points, and um, yeah, we need to get more points on the road as well. So uh, we're working on it, and um, yeah, we've got to just keep plugging away, and we've got a good enough team to make playoffs. In fact, probably even win the playoffs. So we've just got to get there. I think that's the hardest part. You mentioned that there. Obviously, we were at Sheffield last week yourself. 18-point max the backup maybe wasn't quite there obviously I know Armadale is a, a specialist track a lot of guys get dialed in and they get the set up but can you see is there something you think that's just lacking away from home well, every time we've been away from home really it's kind of something like oh if he didn't crash there we would have won or drew at Leicester say and then the other day we were two races on five ones and I think it just I don't really say bad luck because I don't really believe in that that much but yeah just things not really going our way maybe and um yeah, it's just I don't know really what it is, but um, yeah, we need to we need to get some points anyway. Whatever it takes, and we're going to be on for it. That's for sure. And obviously, three matches still to go, so there's still time. Yeah, that's right, mate. We uh, I know we know we can get points on the road, and um, we've just all got to dig deep. We've got the me, Ricky, Cam. We've all we all know we can do it, and um, the boys have just got to back us up on the other side and um, at, at the back end of the, the team. And we know what we've got to do. We just got to get it done. So Sam there, continuing on his, uh, his excellent form since he came back, although that's now uh, two points dropped in 25 heats. Um, come on, Sam, pick your game up, lad. Uh, <laughs> but again, just leading from the front, riding cover, riding strong, uh, and just really setting the table for the rest of the team. Yeah, exactly that, and that's the you know, it's always smiling, that yeah. enthusiasm, and it, uh, don't get it wrong, is uh, that determination behind uh -huh. the smile is definitely there. He's, he's there, Gene, up the guys. I mean, he's still confident that we yeah. can we can go through and uh, do well this season, and it's still there for us to do it. It's in our, it's in our hands, is the bottom line, uh, and he's and he's been looking good for Wolves as well. Yeah. So looking up on fire. So we keep that going. Well, we're in with a shout. Definitely three away matches to come. Obviously Somerset still the date I think still will be announced. Newcastle, Berwick. None of them easy, but particularly that Somerset one. Somerset are the team we are chasing for that fourth playoff place. So that's your old proverbial football six pointer, isn't it? Because not only would that be a, you know, an away win would be a plus three or a plus four for the Monarchs in that category, it would be a minus for the Rebels as well. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we know we're behind and uh, and we need and we need teams to drop points. So that's the way we make teams drop points if we take off them. So 
uh, Somerset there. That's that's where that's the real target. We've got to go and win there. Disappointing it was off on Wednesday. I think it might be a week on Wednesday. But but that, has that been announced uh, on a semester? Uh, I, um, <laughs> yeah, surely. That's sure a great see, that, <laughs> see that confirmed on the Mollers <laughs> website, I'm sure. Exclusive but, uh, here on the uh, Friday <laughs> focus. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> and of course, we've got the crucial matches at Berwick and Newcastle uh-huh. to come as well on that weekend, 8th yeah. and 9th. And that's uh, two places we've gone and won before. It's, uh, we can, yeah, we need to go and do yeah. the job, yeah. Definitely. So still in the Monarchs' favour. Um, if we flip it back to the visitors tonight, um, Eastbourne, we got some reaction from their camp after with it, their reserve, Jason Edwards. Uh, so Jason, tough conditions to start with and then the rain came in later and, and just had to call it off then. Yeah, it was an experience and a half. I mean, <laughs> obviously coming here for the first time, you never know really what to expect. And obviously just with the rain all day, it was kind of like a spongy type surface. So for my first visit, it was obviously a tough one, but two plus two, it was all right, but... I, it didn't go the best, but it's what do you expect the first time? That's it. You mentioned that there. First time here, it's a, it's a track that, you know, experienced rider. I remember Darcy Ward came here and the first time he put himself on the fence on the first lap, and I think that was him done for night. So to go away, we paid for. You must be pretty happy with that overall, though. Yeah, and just come out sort of knowing that, sort of like my starts weren't the best, but I was still with him and everything. And like just in this league, there's first corners and stuff, there's just that much pushier and tighter. And just little bits like that, you pick up every meeting and every meeting I'm going to do, hopefully I'll get that much better, and then hopefully we can get, get in those first pins a bit better. And then from the Eagles' point of view overall, obviously a tough night. It's, a lot of people say the two tracks are similar, but they're actually not. They ride completely different, don't well, they? I was actually chatting to Louis about it earlier. And yeah, they're completely different. And you'd expect it, but it's just getting in the bends here. It's always a bit awkward. And like even like rerun do that crashes and crock ups video and like the <laughs> amount of people going into turn three that spin it around and stuff. So yeah, it's a tough old place. And then anything that could go wrong for the Eagles tonight did. Obviously, I think Louis had a hard one, came down at the end. It was the chain that went or the front of the bike went down on it. Or Kyle, sorry, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, few first bend incidents. Just on a night where you needed everything to go right, it didn't. Yeah, in an eventful night. I think that's how <laughs> it felt, wasn't we? Just uh, dust yourself down and off to Berwick tomorrow. Yeah, Berwick tomorrow, Newcastle Sunday. So hopefully we have a good end of the weekend and roll on from there. So uh, a pleasure to speak to young Jason there. First time I've, I think I've seen him ride, first time I've spoke to him. Uh, he could be happy enough with his night's work. OK, he maybe wasn't setting the heather on fire, as we would say, but in conditions like this, sometimes it's just about riding solid. And, and if you complete your races, you'll pick up points. And that's what he did. Yeah, it's his first time here. He's... He's willing to put it in well, and and, he, and he's driving solid. I mean, unfortunately, Connor Coles has made a couple yeah. of mistakes in heat two when he he's on a solid third place, and and uh, to be fair to Jason, he's come through and yeah. taken that third place right on the line. So uh, fair play to him. So, yeah. Yep. Um. So you know, good win for the Monarchs as we mentioned. there. final score fifty one twenty seven. So a twenty four point victory. That's quick maths there, David. Um. As per always, we've got a race tonight. We mentioned conditions were difficult. That didn't stop us seeing some excellent racing. Here's a cracker between Nick Morris and Josh Picker in Heat 12. So happily, Kyle Newman walked off after that nasty crash, and we've got the other three back for the restart. Oh, Pickering, was that a flyer? Morris cuts up the inside, and who's going to make it to the third bend? It's a tremendous burst by Morris, my goodness. It's carried him right across the corner, and Pickering's back through. And here comes Morris again. Morris is riding out of his skin, and Pickering's cut past him. Now Morris is back in front. Marvellous racing. And believe it or not, the rain's on. And they're producing the best race of the night. Morris really throwing himself round. He's had a patchy season, Nick, but he's... uh, Coming into better form now, and we're certainly seeing it here. I think he's shaking off Josh now. What a super ride by the guest for the Eastbourne Eagles. Well, I bet they're glad they've got him. Terrific ride, shared race. Just shows the, the capabilities of guys like that. You know, the rain was coming down by then, the meeting's over, but those guys are still out there riding hard, but riding fair. And that's what you want to see. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you know from seeing sort of looks and riders, there'll be riders in the pits saying, oh, this isn't they safe or whatever. Uh-huh. And, and they're going inside, outside each other, turning back, determined to win. It's that, that Aussie competitiveness yeah. when they go up against each other. They're always there. Great race. Uh, Josh will be disappointed to lose out, but uh, his days will come and hopefully... Um, Hopefully, maybe down at Somerset that one, turn it around and that'll uh, <laughs> help us to the three points we need there. Definitely. So, see some big matches still to come for the Monarchs, not least next week when I'm checking my programme because I can't remember. Who's here next week, David? Oh, it's the. Oh, it's in the other 
Oh, I'll put you on the spot. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll be back here next week. That's dreadful. No, uh, it's, uh, oh, goodness. Come on, David. <laughs> Hey, as always, we'll be back next Friday, uh, half past seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tickets available on the website this week. Obviously, the earlier you buy them, and the cheaper they are before Thursday. You got an answer for us, David? Uh, it's Birmingham next Birmingham week. Birmingham next week, there you go. Yeah. So the likes of Adam Ellis, um, Jason Garrity, maybe. Um, <laughs> Terry Arnold, I think, is he back from injury? Yeah, I'm not sure so that. some exciting you know, riders and some exciting speed to come next week. Join That's us then. Another match we must win, as David says. And uh, you might have noticed during this, as David mentioned earlier, I'm looking a little bit sodden. Um, we'll now show you a quick clip as to why. Well, I'm going into the bar to get dried off and... Uh, Maybe I got a small refreshment, David. I'll probably see you there. Thanks once again for joining us. Good night.